In this tutorial, we're going to look at how we can use a seven segment display to display the numbers between one and nine and also including zero. So to do this, first of all, we need to build a circuit much that's on the screen and we'll go through that. We're going to be using a seven segment display. Notice that we have a common what's called cathode, which is a negative, And you can see there's a negative rail here and a negative rail here. We're going to be using a program called Tinkercad and we're going to be building a circuit in there. The other items we're going to be using is lots of wires, as you can see, and I've color coded them to help you follow through the tutorial. And also we're going to be using resistors and I've just selected a resistor of 220 ohms, as you can see here. So this is a fairly quick tutorial and what we're going to see at the end of it is when we run the simulation, we can actually test it and then go through the numbers one, two, three, etc. all the way up to nine. Now once you've logged into Tinkercad, select circuits. If you start with a 3D plane, make sure you click the Tinkercad icon on the top left hand corner. This will bring you back into the basic menu system and then click on um, circuits. This will allow you to create a new circuit. So I'm going to click on create new circuit. Once it opens, you can actually go up and change its name. So I've got example seven segment. I'm going to put LED. And then what I'm going to do is head over to where the components are. And I'm going to change it from basic to Adreno. This gives you some standard Adreno boards. And we're going to use this basic one here. And I'm just going to click on that, come out onto the stage, and then just click once more. So this way we've actually got a powered up breadboard with an Adreno board attached. If you hit simulate, you can actually see it start where it clicks in and will start running. You see the simulation time up on the top left as well, knowing that it's working. So I'm just going to click stop at the moment. First thing we need to do is actually build the circuit. So we're going to head back to Adreno. If you look through the basic components list, you'll notice that there's no seven segment LED in there. So we need to go to all. When you go through all, you can search for the seven segment or you can just scroll down. If you've never done this before, I suggest you scroll through and have a look. There's some really cool NeoPixel stuff in here as well, right around here if you want to have a look at it. There's um, some motors for feedback, tactile sensors, piezos, and there's our seven segment display. And we're just going to click on that and drag that out to our desktop. Place it somewhere relatively in the middle and then just let it go. It brings up its little menu system on the top here. If you haven't got that, just click off it and click back on it. We can give it its name if we wanted to, but what we need to do is change its common. At the moment, it's got a common anode, which is positive. We want to change to a common cathode, which is our negative. Now, because we now have a common cathode, we now need to join our commons, which is a cathode, which is our negative, to the negative rails. So I'm just going to click that up and click it on there and change the wire to black. And I'm going to do the same at the bottom. Here's another common down to the negative rail and click that and change the wire to black. Now we'd like to use the negative wires as black and the positive wires as red. But as we go through this tutorial, we're going to sort of break away from that so we can color code the little circuits. Now for every LED, we need a resistor. So you notice there is a dot here. So the dot you can see here DP. So that little connector there belongs to the dot. So to do that, we need to put a resistor in. So I'm going to go from all back to basic, and then I'm going to bring a resistor out and place it on the board. I'm going to push R and just turn it sideways. I'm also going to click off and back on so it comes up. And I want to change the resistance. Rather than being one kilo ohm, I need to turn it to ohms and just give it a 220 value. So this is a 220 ohm resistor. We can apply Ohm's law and actually get the correct one for the LED, etc. But for the tutorial that I'm doing, this will be fine. Now I'm going to place this on the screen. So I'm just going to move it up a little bit closer to here. And you notice that this rail here belongs to the resistor and this rail going down here belongs to the resistor. So what I would like to do is join output pin one to the right hand side of this resistor. And this is going to be the positive line. So just for this sake, I'm going to use red. And then this line here, I'm just going to click and join that to the DP pin on the seven segment LED. 
And I'm also going to color code that red as well. So when we say um, output one to be high, it's going to send a current through here, up through the resistor, down through this wire here, into the LED and out through the common negative. So let's just check that. So we're going to go to our code. Now I like to use the, the text. So I'm going to head there. You can use blocky if you like. And the very first thing we're going to do is change it. So at the moment we are using pin one. So rather than 13, one is going to be an output because I want to send a current through that. And then I want it to become high. So I'm just going to delete that. So pin one become high and then pin one to become low after one second. Let's test our code. There you go. You can see that the dot now is flashing. So let's put another one into the circuit. So I'm just stopping that. I'm going to just click on code so it goes away and back here. We need another resistor. So all I'm going to do this time is I'm going to click on copy and paste. Command C, Command V. Then I can move that into position where I'd like it. So in this case, I'm doing a reverse thing. Now you notice that this leg here is in this line here. Now it doesn't affect the resistor at the top because it's in this one here. And the other side of it is in this line. So we're using lines 25 and also line 21, which nothing else is plugged into. So I'm going to place a wire from two into 25. I'm going to change its color. So the next one's going to be orange. And then from 21, I'm going to take that and place it into the next common along, which is the C. And I'm going to change that wire to orange as well. So we've got a constant orange through here, round to here. Because it is in pin two, what I'm going to do now is actually make that an output. So I'm going to copy the first line of code and I'm going to paste it just below inside the bracket. And I'm going to say pin two is also an output. And once again, we're going to turn pin two high and then we're going to turn pin 2 low. So both pin 1 and 2 will be turned on. Now it's using a basic sort of blinky program, but that's okay. So now both those should turn on. Okay. Now we know that pin 1 is the dot point. So we can actually put a comment in here, dot point. And we know that pin 2 is the bottom right. Now that's going to help us go along and work out which ones of these turn on what part of the segment LED. Now we know the first connector is our dot point, the next one is C, then we have a common, then we've got D and E. So what we need now is a resistor on the other side. So I'm just going to close up the code, select a resistor, Command C, Command V, and I'm just going to move this over to this side. So I'm just going to paste this one in here and then I'm going to paste another one and I'm going to place that one just here. So what we want to do then is connect one of these to E. So from 13, I'm going to draw a line out to one and I'm going to change that color to yellow. And then from line five, which is part of this resistor here, I'm going to join that one to E and I'm going to turn that wire yellow. Now from 12, I'm going to join this one to line three, which is for this resistor here and turn that wire to green. And then from line seven, I'm going to join this to the last connector of D and that's also going to be green. The next thing I'm going to do is actually repeat this for the top line as well. So now we've wired up all the different resistors into our seven segment LED display. Now to check this, we just need to turn all the pins on. So once again, I'm going back to code and I'm just going to copy these two lines of code because we need to declare all our outputs. So I'm just going to declare those down. We're using one, two, three, we're using four. We're also using 10, 11, 12, 
and 13. Now what I'd like to do is turn all of those high. So once again, I'm just going to select all these. I'm just going to paste it. So just after the bottom here, I've got two comments. So I'm just going to paste those here. Just remove this comment tag on the end. And I'm just going to paste this a couple of more times to cover all the eight pins. You might find a better way of doing it. One, two, three, four, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So this should turn them all on and then it's only going to turn one and three off. So let's have a look at our program running, see that it works. So let's hit go. And you can see that they've all turned on and only two of them turn off. Okay. So what I'm going to do right now is in the void loop, I'm just going to create another little program that says void. And then I'm going to call it clear display. Now you notice that this uses camel case so it has lower and then capitals for every word after that and it's all one word now in here rather than having all the highs i could actually do the same thing and just put lows so whenever i want to clear the display all i have to do is call this function over and over again so it saves me having all the information duplicated okay so now these are all low and then what I'm going to do is put a delay on the end of this. And when I would like to call it, all I need to do is call clear display bracket bracket. So up here, rather than having the lows, etc., I'm just going to change this to clear display, place a semicolon on the end. So it will go through, turn them all on, wait a second, then it should turn them all off. Make sure you put the delay down here, you've got the whole word. And then it should go through, turn them all off, delay another second, then it'll turn them all back on. So it should blink again. One second on, one second off. Excellent. All right. So what I'm going to do with my code now, I'm going to make another function called void, and I'm going to call it test display. And I'm going to call it bracket bracket open brace close brace and this time I'm going to copy this whole section in and paste it so rather than having the test loop up here I can actually then put the test in here I can go test display open close bracket with a semicolon so this line of code will call this down here and therefore I can delete all this above. So this now becomes void loop is my main program. So test the display, wait a second, clear the display. So it should run down, turn them all on, then wait a second, and then it should then turn them all off, wait a second, then I'll display them again. So let's see the output of this. Now that we've got that, the next thing we need to do is create functions for each of our displays. So we need to have a look at say void and then we call it number. So let's go number zero and then open close brace and we should be right then to turn the ones we need on high. So, so what I'm going to do is copy this down and paste it in here and make sure it lines up nicely just to be good. And this is number zero. So up in our number program, after we've done the test display, wait a second, clear the display, the next thing I want it to do is show number zero, semicolon. So once it's done zero, I then want it to clear the display. So we're gonna try to get zero to appear. Now to do that, you need to work out what each of these little ones do. We know we've got the dot. Well, I don't need the dot for the zero, so I can put two lines in front of that. It does the bottom right one, which is here. I need that one. But I don't, want, I don't know what 3 is, 4 is, 10, 11, 12. So you can go through and test them. So with 3, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off all the other lines bar 3. So I can work out what 3 is. So if I do this, 
it'll help me build my program. So let's run the program now. And yes, I know I do have to wait because it should go through the test, then the clear. Now number three, you notice that we've actually missed a delay. So we can't actually see the zero or the number appear. So let's just put the little delay in there. So show test display, wait a second, clear display, then show number zero. In number zero, we've only got one thing turned on. So let's check this now. Test display, clear display. And so that is top right. So in the comment next to it, I'm just gonna put forward slash top right. Now I wanna go through and find out what the rest of them are. So I'm just gonna turn top right off. Let's have a look at number four. Now, depending on how you wired this up, it might be a little bit different for you, but this way we've checked all the pins so I know exactly what's going on. So in this case here, I'm just gonna copy this. I'm gonna paste this into the test display and then take away all the comment lines so it tests all the different channels. This way now, I've got all the comments next to it. So to do a zero, I need top, top right, bottom right, bottom, bottom left, top left. So I don't need the dot point. I need bottom right, yes. I need top right, yes. I need top, top left. Don't need middle. I need bottom and bottom left. So now I should have a zero appearing. So there's my zero. Now you should be able to complete this process by adding the next number in. So that was zero. So if I copy this now and paste it and change that to one, then I can actually just copy test display or copy number one and change or zero, change that to a one to repeat the process from zero all the way through to nine, showing all the digits in the base 10 number system. So I hope you found this tutorial useful. If you did, give it a like, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and have a look around for other useful YouTube videos for Adreno boards.